Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Smith and my wireless communications project is on optimized energy detection spectrum sensing in Hyper Rayleigh fading channels. With growing wireless technologies, access to the spectrum is increasingly becoming more limited. This is worsening due to poor channel allocation and spectral utilization across various licensed and unlicensed bands. With spectral holes that could be utilized for wireless communication, a cognitive radio device has been proposed to enable a form of dynamic spectral access, improving spectral usage efficiency and making use of opportunities for proper communication. To achieve dynamic access, a form of detection is needed to characterize the local spectral environment this primary task of cognitive radios is known as spectrum sensing. There are various forms of spectral sensing methods. However, for this project, the performance of what is known as an energy detector is assessed. These devices are considerably cheap and low in complexity and resource usage. No previous knowledge of the received signal or of the surrounding spectra is needed. A conventional energy detector performs summing, squaring, and absolute value operations to assess the received signal Y of N's energy. And based on what the energy value is, it can indicate one of two hypotheses. It will be either H of zero, which indicates the energy consists of noise only, or no signal is present, or H of one, indicating that a signal is present with noise also present within the channel of transmission. The hypothesis decision is based on an energy threshold value. The performance of an energy detector can be gauged with two statistics, the probability of detection as well as the probability of false alarm. Within different fading environments, the threshold used for detection can be better optimized to lower the probability of false alarm and increase the probability of consistent detection. For this project, threshold optimization for energy detection-based spectrum sensing over hyper-Rayleigh fading channels by Allen and others will be observed. Performance of energy detectors will be assessed over several channels, including additive white Gaussian noise, Ricean fading channels, Rayleigh channels, as well as a relatively new distribution known as two-wave with diffuse power. This has often been referred to as a form of hyper-Rayleigh fading due to its significant fade loss characteristics. With a worst case scenario metric known, performance in improved conditions or less severe fading channels can be better gauged. For simulation, programming is performed within MATLAB and Monte Carlo simulations are performed to determine several key statistical characteristics. Assumptions have to be made as well to compare the performance of this simulation to the findings of the author. A 10 sample binary message is used for transmission and the conventional energy detector that we had previously discussed is present at the receiver. The figure displayed shows the process of a single sensing iteration. The binary message is transmitted through a fading channel with different fading parameters specified in the paper by Allen and others. And based on the energy value, Hypotheses H0 or H1 are determined. After 10 to the fifth Monte Carlo simulations, probabilities of detection, misdetection, false alarm, and the resulting probability of error are evaluated. The probability of error will be important because it provides a metric that when minimized, the performance of the energy detector is maximized. The probability density function for a two-wave diffuse power distribution is specified within the paper, utilizing a multitude of average SNR values, K factors, and modified Bessel functions. The fading channel, however, can be assembled separately from this particular density function, but it w this value will be key to determining the average probability of detection within a two-wave diffuse power fading environment present later on in the presentation. The received envelope for a two-wave diffuse power fading environment is 
present within the journal by Rapoport and others, which had originally presented the two-wave hyper-Rayleigh distribution. The fading cha channel samples can now be easily generated utilizing this closed form expression containing several complex Gaussian random variables as well as two uniform distributions from 0 to 2 pi. With the fading channel generated, the PDF can be compared to the findings present within the journal by Rapoport, and it can be seen that the, with matching parameters, the density functions are also thankfully identical. Using this new fading channel and other known channel types, the probability of error across different threshold values and fading channels can be simulated. The performance of the energy detector is similar to what was presented in the original paper as seen in the left figure. The simulation's probability of error is slightly higher, however, but this can be attributed to the assumed binary message that also had an assumed length of 10 samples. Changing the length or the type of message transmitted may provide an improved performance. In both figures, the probability of error reaches a particular value that's been circled, where an optimal threshold value has been used that minimizes the probability of error and maximizes the detector's performance. This optimized threshold can be determined and used to improve accuracy and efficiency of the spectral sensing operation. Utilizing equation 9, the minimal error probability can provide the new optimal threshold value. Using this, the average probability of detection within a two-wave diffuse power fading environment can be assessed and a new performance curve can be generated. This curve can then be compared to the conventional constant false alarm rate or CFAR performance, which uses standards present in the IEEE 802.22 cognitive radio standard. Figure 2 from the main paper of focus provides the previously mentioned optimal curve with reduced error at increasing levels of SNR. The average probability of detection is also present in the figure in blue and the dashed line indicates the cognitive radio standard probability of false alarm. Within the simulation in the figure on the right, a similar optimal curve is generated, although the error probability doesn't roll off quite as fast as is the case for the original paper's figure. This can again be attributed to the message type and length, as well as the number of Monte Carlo simulations that may have been performed to determine this. And finally, the probability of error is assessed with different two-wave diffuse power fading environments. Comparing the conventional CIFAR system to that of the paper's proposed optimal value determination. The performance in the paper's figure on the left indicates that the optimal value outperformed the CIFAR approach at every level of SNR, whereas the MATLAB simulation on the right indicates they're particularly close. At higher signal-to-noise ratio values, however, the optimal value still outperforms the CIFAR approach. Here's an overview of what's been done. For the MATLAB simulation, a binary message was chosen for transmission, with figures generated from Monte Carlo simulations. The average probability of detection in a hyper-Rayleigh environment from the paper was used to determine the performance of the optimal threshold value system in comparison to a conventional constant false alarm rate approach. The results for all figures were strikingly similar, although the error probability was slightly higher in the simulations. This could be attributed to the assumptions that were made for this project. For comparison of performance, a higher complexity message or a two-wave diffuse power channel with modified parameters could be used. With an optimized threshold value in conventional energy detectors, this technology has been improved while remaining relatively simple and not resource heavy. This improvement is important to a more efficient spectral sensing technology. Thanks for watching.